Thank you, Brandon and Lindsay. And we want to welcome those of you who are watching from home. Uh, I have the privilege today of, uh, of preaching. My name is uh, Pastor Jody Wood, and this is my wife, Dorothy. And uh, we kind of have a burden for mm -hmm. something very important that we believe God has for us uh, this, this, this week. So um, last week, uh, Pastor Ryan was talking about, you know, start, you know, he started in his essentials uh, series. And he was talking about the fact that rest is essential, mm -hmm. that we all need physical rest, you know, a separation from distractions. You know, rest does not, though, always mean inactivity. Right. It means setting margins in your life and being able to, uh, you know, set down the distractions, have time with the Lord. Uh, it's just kind of fueling. Pastor Ryan said this, physical rest allows us to soak in soul rest. We have to slow down and make room for soul rest. Mm -hmm. You know, there is an opportunity for us because when you look at the COVID-19, it's kind of forced us to slow ourselves down. And, and that's what we're hearing a lot. Um, and so what he was talking about is we really need that. Mm -hmm. And what we're going to talk about here today is, is not just physical rest, but it is soul rest because it is difficult when we're not settled on the inside. Right. You know, our souls can become restless and disquieted in turmoil, shadowed by guilt, shame, anger, bitterness, the list goes on and on, and my, my belief is, and what God is trying to communicate here, is that he wants us to rest in him. He wants us to have wholeness mm -hmm. and, uh, you know, to be able to have a better relationship with him. And I think we can take a look at the COVID um, you know, situation that we're dealing with today and, and look at what God is really trying to do, because I think he is really trying to do a work in each one of our hearts. Listen. Even though society seems to have stopped, God has not. Right, right. He's still working in our lives. Right. True rest really comes from that quieted soul, that quieted spirit. I know when you hear Pastor Ryan talk about Mary and Martha last week and talking about real rest, immediately you think that, well, I can't sit still. That just means I'm lazy. But again, that's not what we're referring to today is, mm -hmm. is that sitting still and not doing anything. It means looking internally. Real, really, again, true rest comes from that quieted spirit. And that when I look up that word quiet, Jode, it talks about uh, being still. It's being undisturbed and be undisturbing as well. It means peaceable, immovable. It means being settled and steadfast. It means tranquility. Uh, really true rest comes when we connect with God, when we spend time with God, when we communicate with God. And, and then when we're communicating with him and we're connecting with God, that's when we're going to be refreshed. Our souls will be refreshed, will be renewed, will be restored, and will be released. And in God, we are made whole. And in that quietness, in that stillness with him, we are made whole. It's a lot like sanctification, Jody. Just, that just means being made whole in Christ being made whole in God. Mm -hmm. And this is, this is a passion of my heart because it's been, it's it, based on 31 years of ministry here at <laughs> Calvary, seeing people struggle, seeing mm -hmm. what they're going through. And one of my favorite shows that I watch is Hoarders. And I don't know <laughs> if you've ever seen that show, but it is horrendous what we see in human behavior. But what is fascinating to me isn't so much looking at the story of what they do to try to clean up their lives. I always look for what had happened in their lives that actually started the process. Yeah. And there was one lady that I was uh, looking at recently. She didn't have any hoarding issues at all. But then all of a sudden, her husband left her unexpectedly. And as a result of the divorce that happened, their son committed suicide. Mm. And you got to you got to understand that's going to shake your soul. That shakes your world. And what happened is she couldn't deal with it. Things got stuck on the inside, you know? And and that's what happens in our lives. It's like we get stuck. There are traumas that happen. There are things that happen in our lives. And it doesn't have to necessarily be somebody who comes from an abusive home. It it can be all of us that can experience trauma 
where we experience difficulties and things that are going to really cause us to kind of close up inside. Right. You know, we, we kind of mm -hmm. stuff things. Our brains yeah. <laughs> kind of run amok, you yeah. know. But the reality is we're broken people. And ever since the fall of man, we've had a hole inside of us. Mm -hmm. And somebody had once said that it's a hole that only God can fill, but we yeah. try to fill it with other things. Right. And when God, when we try to rest, our human tendency is to run from that. Mm -hmm. And I think that's what we want to talk about today. The fact that no matter what we are going through, no matter what we have faced in our lives, the good news is God is our redeemer. Praise God. And all through history, and I love reading the scripture because of this, because mm -hmm. when you look at from Genesis to Revelation, and I know that some people have difficulty with this, but what I see is a God who loves us so much mm -hmm that he pursues us to make us whole and he makes okay. us whole because he wants that relationship that was lost mm -hmm. in the garden of eden we're going to be talking about that but the fact is he's passionate about a relationship with us he pursues us fiercely he does everything and we're going to kind of demonstrate a little about that but god wants to heal our disconnect he wants us and that's why it's essential what we're talking right, about here right. today because if without that healing, we run from God. And, and we're going to look at a scriptural premise that's going to, um, you know, Help illustrate that. that. Yeah. So why is wholeness essential? <laughs> He's definitely a jealous God, yeah. you know, righteously jealous. And that he just, he loves us so much. He wants that relationship with us. And so when we're speaking this morning about wholeness is essential, um, we got to ask why. Why is that so important? Um, one is that in God we have peace. Uh, it's allowing, wholeness is allowing God to show us areas in our life that cause that restlessness or that feeling of being disturbed, uh, which needs to be healed. I know that in this COVID-19 time, I've heard stories of individuals that are very busy with life, mm -hmm. et cetera, and then they've had to come to that slow down moment and they don't know what to do with themselves. I was just speaking with someone last weekend and they were talking about the fact that, you know, they they, they didn't they thought that they needed to keep working they they were just fidgety they were just <laughs> uh, couldn't sit still I, like I said um, but in God there's peace when look at Psalms 42 5 it says why are you in despair O my soul and why have you become restless and disturbed within me good question <laughs> hope in God and wait there it is. Mm -hmm. Wait expectantly for him, for I shall gain praise for the help of his presence. Mm. Just ponder that a moment or read that scripture again later, Psalms 42, 5. So in God, we have that peace versus restlessness. That's why wholeness is essential. Wholeness is also essential, Jody, because God provides everything we need. Mm -hmm. And we have to go after that provision versus trying to replace it with something else. Um, releasing those coping mechanisms that are not healthy coping mechanisms, it's letting go um, of our go-to, as it were. Those things that we run to. Coping mechanisms, when I looked that up because I wanted to have a clear definition, just means that it's the strategies people use in the face of stress or trauma to help manage painful or difficult emotions. Mm -hmm. So when things get stirred up, um, we tend to go to those go-tos in our life. That could be a phone, you know, and checking social media over and over again and scrolling constantly, never putting that down. Maybe mm -hmm. it's turning on the TV and binge watching something, you know, I'm not, and none of these things are wrong. No, yeah. None of those things are wrong. So don't, don't hear that from me today. Um, maybe it, we go to another book, you know, it's not the Bible and, or maybe it's alcohol or maybe it's food that we run to. What is our go-to? You know, what are we trying to deal with really that we are trying to substitute or replace that? And mm -hmm. God is everything that we need. That brings that wholeness. Also, wholeness is essential because in God we have healing versus bondage. 
healing inner, that inner restlessness. It's healing that unsettledness, healing those issues or those things that we keep stuffing down like Jody was talking about earlier as we began this message today. Stuffing those things, those issues that we really can't shake and every once in a while things happen and uh, it, it crops back up again in us and we're face to face with that and there's just that black cloud that looms over our head all the time. See, in God we have that healing versus that bondage. It's a replacement. In God, we have fullness uh, versus emptiness. I love that, that we are made for something more. Mm -hmm. When we talk about the Garden of Eden a little bit later, you know, it was a perfect place. It was a place where God dwelled. And, you know, each one of us is created in the image of God for that relationship. So inside of us, there is a yearning that we might not even realize is there, a yearning uh, to be closer to our creator, to be closer to God. There is a desire that's there. And if we stuff it or try to uh, replace it with other things, there's going to be that emptiness and we may be running on empty. Mm -hmm. So in God, we have that fullness versus that emptiness. And then also wholeness is essential because in God, we have relationship. (laughs) <laughs> That's the favorite thing. God mm-hmm. can be our best friend. He is our best friend if we'll allow him to be um, versus that disconnection that's there. And that's exactly where the enemy, you know, the enemy of our souls wants us to be in that disconnect with God. And that relationship is real. It's authentic. It's genuine. It's not something that it's something we can trust in. Mm -hmm. Uh, Just bottom line, you know, in our relationships in this world today, we might not be able to trust that what people are saying to us is true or trust that they're going to keep our confidence. But in God, we can trust. And so wholeness is important and is essential because in God, we have that kind of relationship, that authenticity. And in that relationship, again, we can be restored we can be renewed, we can be refreshed, we can be re-energized, and Mm -hmm. we can be released. Mm -hmm. How cool was that? So wholeness is essential because it's just going to bring that stability for us. It's going to bring that steadfastness. I'd call it my even keel. It's it's why God brought you into my life, Jody, Mm -hmm. because you were my, you were steady Eddie there with that. You're never, not all your ups and downs like I am, but God's even better than you are, believe it or not. Really? Yeah, he is. Oh, man. (laughs) So God provides that stability, that steadfastness, Mm -hmm. that security, that peace. And when you think about that, too, I have this example, okay, when I look at this. When we went to Tennessee several years ago with the kids, and we did a right white water rafting trip with them. Now, mind you, we did one of those easy white water mm-hmm. rafting trips, you know, even though my Jordan kept asking the entire time, Mom, can I jump out? I'm like, uh, no. <laughs> mm-hmm. And, uh, but he, he loved that. But it was an easy white water rafting trip, but it was very turbulent. It was very rocky. It was, you were you were tense the entire time because yeah yeah. you had to be on your guard you had to pay attention they trained us before we got into that boat so i can't even imagine what real rapids might be like Mm -hmm. so you compare that or a, a, a nasty thunderstorm or a hurricane to something like still waters if you just shut your eyes a minute, I think of the still waters, you know, a stream that's just flowing through and, and it's just very peaceful and you hear the birds singing and there's a nice gentle breeze. Okay, I'll come back to life right now in that way. It, it's kind of described in Psalms 23 too, um, mm-hmm. when it talks about the Lord is our shepherd and, and he lets me rest in green meadows. It's just, that's a peacefulness. He leads me, he takes me by the hand and leads me beside those still and quiet waters. Mm-hmm. There's, it's just a peaceful stream. And that's the difference between um, the settledness in God, the security in God, the wholeness in God compared to the unrest and unsettledness otherwise. Mm-hmm. Amen. And, and kind of where we want to go now is, is to the scriptural foundation, which is an old story. But to me, the story in the Garden of Eden has everything to do with our lives and redemption because everything about Genesis 3, which is the after effects of the fall, still happen today. Mm -hmm. We still blame one another like Adam and Eve did. We still 
uh, avoid. We still do things. But there's a couple of things that I want us to look at. Number one is that there was perfect relationship with, between God and man. Mm -hmm. And it was disturbed. It was disturbed by Adam and Eve's sin. And because of that, they saw each other as naked. And so when we look at Genesis 3, we, we look at the fact that now they have sinned, they ate the fruit, and now they look at each other and they're naked. And all of a sudden, God's like, he's saying, what? I can't find them. Or I think God knew where yeah. they were anyway. <laughs> yeah. But it says in verse 8, when the cool evening breezes were blowing, the man and his wife heard the Lord God walking about in the garden. And so they hid. They hid from the Lord God among the trees. Mm -hmm. They thought that they could run from their shame. Hmm. Then the Lord God called to the man, and, and this is the, really an illustration of God's pursuit. And he says, where are you? Now, God did not, like, he didn't <laughs> lose them. Right. But he was most interested in reconnecting with them by asking that question. It's like God knew that something had disconnected their fellowship and he wanted to re-engage it. And he replied in verse 10, I heard you walking in the garden, so I hid. I was afraid because I was naked. And, and that's such a profound thing because what happens is they open, their eyes were opened. They saw something they were never designed to see, that sin nature within them. Hmm. And they ran and hid. And that is kind of a, an impulse that we all have. Whenever we feel shame and we feel guilt and we feel like we're disconnected from people, we run and hide. And, and in verse 11, it says, who told you you were naked? One of the greatest questions that God asked, you know, have you eaten from the tree whose fruit I commanded you not to eat from? So it's like God was addressing their shame. Who told you you were naked, you know? Mm -hmm. and, and, and we're not going to be talking about shame here today uh, right. per se. But I just wanted to kind of highlight the fact that one of the things they did is they ran and hid. And how many of us today, when God is chasing after us and he mm -hmm. says, hey, I want to work on your life because I want something from you. I want a relationship. I want to restore something that was broken, that was extremely valuable to me. And I think we, we struggle with this idea that God wants us in relationship. He wants us quiet before him so that we can have fellowship with one another. But the second thing he did, they did was when the shame entered and sin entered and the shame was evident. Adam and Eve did another thing, which is according to verse 7 of Genesis 3, it says they sewed fig leaves together to cover themselves. <laughs> I find that fascinating. They sewed fig leaves together. In other words, they not only hid from the Lord, but before they did that, they saw each other naked and he said, we've got to cover ourselves. We, it, this is uncomfortable. And Dorothy was doing some research on yeah. fig leaves. Yeah, I just had and, to know how big these, yeah. these leaves really were. And, you know, she found that fig leaves are only about five to, you know, five inches, ten inches. Yeah. Uh, about four to five or seven inches wide. Yeah. So they're not very big. And so no. the, the phrase here, they had to sew them together, which means they had to purpose yeah. to take these things that they were going to cover themselves. They had to work. Yeah. At covering themselves. And you also found out that when they're sewed together, they're very sticky and uncomfortable. Yeah. On the underside, you know, yeah. they're very sticky. So not only did they have to sew these things together yeah. and make this belt to cover themselves, but then they were all sticky and nasty. Talk I mean, about uncomfortable. But, but the, the, the bottom line is it's inadequate. Yeah. Yeah. You know, you got to think, okay, when we try to cover ourselves because of our shame or we try to run from God, it's like who of us can actually run from God? Who of us can actually say, I can cover myself so God doesn't see my nakedness? Right. But he already sees it. So mm -hmm. the, the point is, is that it was completely inadequate clothing. And the things that we do in our lives today are completely inadequate to cover the shame and the guilt and everything that we struggle with. And so we, you know, we, we look at the fact that, you know, my question would be, what is your fig leaf? Yeah. Because everybody has different ways to cover. We all run and hide, you know, when God comes walking because of our shame. Right. But it's like, 
how big is our fig leaf? How big is what we sow together? Because what that is, in essence, is nothing but self a self-protected mode. Yeah. And we don't want to, you know, find ourselves before God in that state. But once again, we want to emphasize the fact that wholeness means that God wants to not allow us to stay in that condition. Right. He doesn't want us to keep hiding. No. So when we peel back the layers, and here's the glitch, you know, it's like really fascinating because I find in my ministry that God is, is active, okay? <laughs> Even though we're running, he's active. He right. still says, where are you? Right. Why are you wearing those leaves? <laughs> so listen, when we peel back the layers and God has given us a healing and we, and we take away what, what is distracts us from what's really going on inside of us, we really start seeing what we're covering. Yeah. We start to see what we're hiding from. It's like I've told people, if you want to know what's causing your addiction, stop it <laughs> and find out what surfaces. <laughs> yeah. Because it will. Yeah. You know, the fig leaf is temporary. And so we want to be able to peel back the layers and allow God to do that. That's a part of the essential of wholeness. And I want to give an illustration to that today, and it's personal, of course. Uh, but during this COVID-19 time, um, and, and this has happened on multiple occasions, not just during these recent events, when things started to slow down. For me, I started to see some things that were uncomfortable, and I had a choice to keep running, you know, or keep moving, keep trying to fill my day with things because it wasn't as busy as normal, although it was a different type of busy. Mm -hmm. um, I had to I had to recognize that that something wasn't right. And um, God was revealing some areas inside of me that I needed to deal with. Now, <laughs> many times in the course of my relationship with God, um, I have avoided him. I know none of you do that, but I well, have. Right. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I've avoided God because I know that if I sit down and I'm still with him for a minute, he might actually show me something that I have to deal with, okay? Mm -hmm. Or or show me something that I have to pray through or reveal something in me that, um, you know, cuts to the core. And sometimes that can be fearful. That's, you know, that's kind of like mm -hmm. why Adam and Eve hid because they knew they had done something wrong. Yeah. You know, and I'm not saying that I had done something wrong or I was in sin or anything like that. No. But you just feel that stirring inside of you and you know that God's trying to talk to you. So mm -hmm. I've avoided him on occasion. And, and in this specific instance, though, um, in this process, I had to let go of a go-to. All right. And God was showing me that, that in this time, now's the time. It's time to let go of this go-to. And um, when I did and I put that down, mm. my restlessness inside increased exponentially. Yeah, that's the problem. Uh, it was, I'm like, are you serious? <laughs> I'm going to go back to my go-to now because I don't like this feeling that I'm feeling. It's like I had to put my pacifier away as it were, and and deal with what was in front of me. God was doing a deeper work inside of me, and all I needed to do was sit still a minute, Jode, and just let him talk to me. And and that's so cool. When you open up his word and you just start reading it and you start worshiping with him, you know, that love of God just mm -hmm. comes pouring in. It's not punishment. It's not condemnation. Right. It is pure love and care and devotion towards me. And he says, come sit with me, talk to me. Let's deal with this together. And I had to let go. And I'm telling you, I had a death grip on this thing. Okay. I had a death grip on this stronghold in my life and this coping mechanism. And I had to let go. I had to release my grip and, and hand it over to the Lord and surrender that to him. And, you know, it's taken several years, honestly, believe it or not, for, for me to get to this place. Um, mm -hmm. God has continued to peel back the layers over all these years. There's been a resistance inside of me because I want to do what I want to do when I want to do it. And that's mm -hmm. just the way it's going to be. All right. Um, but I would let go for a minute and then I would take it back 
and then I would get restless again, all right? Um, I opened up to God. I opened up to some trusted friends. I, I let people know what was going on in my life in order to be able to have some accountability. That was mm -hmm. important. And um, I just began walking one day at a time since uh, letting go of this, walking one day at a time in God's grace. That's critical because that condemnation can quickly come in again mm -hmm. and the thoughts come in again and the desires to do what's, you know, not um, healthy for me come in again. And I just had to keep walking day by day in God's grace. And he is healing me in a deeper mm -hmm. level. And that's the key. God keeps wanting to take us deeper. I prayed that <laughs> it was five years ago. I sat here in this sanctuary during a night of worship all right, and we were singing oceans. Mm -hmm. And I stood before God and I said, Lord, please take me deeper than my feet could ever wander. <laughs> That's like praying for patience. <laughs> what ails you, Dorothy? <laughs> That was like playing for patience. And I'm telling you, he's reminded me of that prayer over and over again. But you know what, Jode? He's taken me deeper, yeah. <laughs> deeper than my feet could ever wander. And yeah. those waves have never uh, come over me and drowned me in any way. He helps me to walk through that. And that's what's so cool about God. So yes. this has been a repeated pattern for me, but God continues to do the healing that he wants to do. And he will, and he will continue to pursue it. And the thing is, the only way that we can stop God from doing it is to, is to cut him off completely. Right. Because the idea is, and I want to just give four quick takeaways here. Yeah. Uh, number one, God wants us to be whole. We right. see that in Genesis. We see the disconnect, hmm. but we see what God is doing. He wants to pursue our fig leaves. He, he's interested in what is covering us because he says, I've got something better. Right. You know, a relationship. And we're going to talk about that here in a minute. So he wants us. He pursues us to make us whole. He wants that relationship. And if you look at Genesis to Revelation, you see his love. And the idea of Genesis, of a revelation at the end of what we're going to be when we leave this earth and we come back in the new heavens and the new earth is a recreation of the Garden of Eden. Mm -hmm. It's sort of like man messed it up. But God is ready to put it and rest, restore. It's like Jesus on the cross. That, it's just to me, the passion of, of, of Christ was God's love for us. And when he said, it is finished, and that curtain was torn in two, we had free access. Wow. Praise God. You know, I mean, he pursues us because he wants us to be whole. That's Secondly, right. God will use life, and this is very difficult. God will use life yeah. circumstances to expose what is harmful to us right. and our relationship with him. One of the things I just don't like is when Dorothy is used by God <laughs> to expose something in me, and I get angry at her, but really what God is intending is saying, hey, I just squeezed you. I used a life circumstance. And, and it's time for you to look at it, mm -hmm. you know? And he uses circumstances. He uses people. He also uses the Holy Spirit, and he uses his word. Yeah. And there's a word in Hebrews 4 that says in verses 12 and 13, and I'm reading it in the New Living Translation, for the word of God is, act, is active and powerful. It's mm -hmm. alive. It is sharper than the sharpest two-edged sword. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's sharp. Cutting between soul and spirit, between mm. joint and marrow. But listen to this. It exposes our inmost thoughts and desires. Mm. You cannot get close to the Lord and not change. Mm. But we can avoid the Lord and stay the same. And I think that's important, you know, in the context of what this says here. Innermost thoughts and desires will be exposed. Nothing in all of creation is hidden from him. But everything is naked and exposed before his eyes, and he is the one to whom we are accountable. God is not looking to expose us. We don't have a target on our back right. where God is saying, I'm going to get you. Yeah. But yet that's what we feel. Right. We look at God's love and his pursuit of us, and he says, I want to expose things in you because I want you free. I want you whole. I want you to be the best person you can be yes. for everybody around you. We disciple one another to help us all to grow in perfection with him. So our motives, attitudes, thoughts are exposed before God. Why? Because he knows us more mm. 
than we know ourselves. Mm-hmm. And that's <laughs> scary sometimes. Yeah, it is. Third, and this is difficult, we have to face what God brings to our attention in order to be whole. Mm-hmm. We have to face it. We can run. We can get our fig leaves together. We, can, we have dresser drawers that have all these fig leaves we can sew together. And that, and that is all our coping mechanisms, our addictions, and everything that causes us to eliminate that wholeness in our lives. But our tendency is a natural one. When you look at Genesis 3, we all do that. We all blame. You know, the woman you put here with me, you know, and, and we're all blaming. We go back to our defensiveness and to our denial and to our, you know, deflections. And we don't really look within ourselves. But you look at the scripture and it says that search me, O God, and know my heart. You know, and we are to examine ourselves because the good news is in this point is whatever God reveals, he heals. Whatever he brings to the surface and it feels bad, (laughs) you know, it's uncomfortable. Yeah, it is. But but it's the same thing that I use with like a physical analogy. It's like if you break your leg, it's going to feel uncomfortable. The doctor's going to do something about it. But even though you wish it would go away, it still has to heal on its own. Right, right. And that, that's important. But God is faithful to heal whatever it is that he brings to the surface. We can trust a God who loves us to make us whole. Right. And this isn't just for people who have been through hurt and pain. Because right. we go through this coronavirus thing. It's causing hardship. And, and that's where God will expose things in us. And he wants us to heal. He can take care of us. Mm-hmm. And he will have his provision. But the last point, number four. Mm. We have to push past our comfort zones. I love this. We have to de- get rid of our fig leaves to allow God to create wholeness. We have to be willing to take off the belt of everything that we have done mm-hmm. to protect ourselves. And we have to say, Lord, here it is. You take it. And God's love is very evident when he wanted to pursue Adam and Eve. And he says, where are you? And I really believe that he's doing the same thing today. We can hide among the trees. We can hide among our anxieties, our depression. We can hide with alcohol and drugs. And we can hide with food. We can hide with a lot of things. But God is still coming saying, where are you? Yeah. I want relationship. I want wholeness for you. Let me let me say this, Jode, at this point, too. When you, when you take a look again at Genesis chapter 3, and I, w- I won't take too long to talk mm-hmm. about this, but when you, when you look at that, it says, when the cool evening breezes were blowing, okay? When you think about that, you know, it was the end of the day. It was peaceful. The sun was setting. It's that soft glow of sunset. The day's work had been done, and, and God was walking in the garden, Mm-hmm. And and just think for a minute, you know, did he come to the garden every night at the end of the day to meet with Adam and Eve? Was that his practice and his presence to be there in that way? Um, did he do that on a regular basis to, to maintain that relationship and connection and intimacy with Adam and Eve? Because he does the same with us too. But because of what had happened and because they had disobeyed God, they hid. And that shame just kept them from coming out to meet with God in the garden mm-hmm. so it was unusual that was unusual to me when I read that when I read into it my mm-hmm. little you know story here you know it was unusual because God wanted uh, to talk to them and they were nowhere to be found but yeah. to think that God says where are you man that hits me to my core because God says that to you today where are you mm-hmm. where are you and he doesn't say it like where are you he says, where are you? That's yeah. just in that sweet, sweet, come to me voice. You know, I want to talk to you. I want to connect with you. Um, and that's beautiful. And he wants wholeness. And, yeah. that's, and that's the whole point. Mm-hmm. But here's the greatest part of this whole story is that God's redemption was evident in this story. <laughs> that's neat, too. You know, <laughs> and uh, it says in Genesis 3.21, you got to catch this. Yeah. And the Lord God made clothing from animal skins for Adam and his wife, Eve. Think about that for a minute. He made clothing from animal skins, which means he had to sacrifice Mm. animals, which is when we look at redemption, Mm -hmm. the shedding of blood, remission of sin. It's almost like God did two things at one time. And and we refer to this as the great exchange. Mm. He said... 
I want you to take the fig leaves off mm -hmm. and I want you to put on what I have. Because what I, what your fig leaves will cover just what's uncomfortable to you. But what I have to offer is freedom from sin. Mm -hmm. Freedom from what you did. Freedom from shame. But also clothing, covering. Yeah. His covering. God's redemption clothes us. It makes so us cool. whole. <laughs> and it makes us whole because God wants us whole. Yes. He pursues us for that. And that's the hope that we have today. Mm -hmm. And when Pastor Ryan's talking about rest, it is very, very important for us to have that. But one of the things that is, is important within the context of that rest is the ability to be able to hear from God. Yes. To quiet the soul like Elijah did and heard that still small voice. Mm that compels us to come, not because we're afraid of him, but because we love him, because of what he did for us. Mm -hmm. So that is such a powerful thing. Yeah, we just have to settle down and quiet yeah. ourselves but to hear that voice. That's very difficult to do. It is. Because we have, you know, we're sitting on the couch and we're worshiping God, but right beside us we have our fig leaf belt. And, and we, you know, we can, we can have a good time with God and we go back out in society and we end up putting it back on again. It's right. like what God puts on us is permanent. Mm -hmm. The identity that he puts in us is permanent. So praise the Lord. We want to close this time together with just a, a little bit of practical insight here. Just, a, just four things that we can do practically. Uh, the first one is we need to be able to listen internally. We have right. to train ourselves. It's like the distractions of life are always going to be there. Yeah. And, and the things that we do to try to, to run from ourselves and from others and from God is always going to be there. And we have to listen internally because God is in here. He is God incarnate. He, mm -hmm. you know, he has redeemed us. And what's interesting is that when we're able to quiet our spirits, we can hear the voice of God. Right. It is as simple as reading the Bible right. and listening internally. And you can hear God like saying, see, this is for you. And we avoid the Yabbit syndrome. You know what the <laughs> Yabbit syndrome is? It's when we read the scripture and we say, yeah, but that's not for me. And we have to stop that because... When God speaks and he, we quiet our souls and we listen internally, we have a word for us. Yeah. Each individual person <laughs> yes. has a word for themselves. God loves you and wants you whole. Right. And he's not going to stop, you know. So listening internally is where we find that quiet waters. You know, it's, it's that still small voice that Elijah heard it, and, it, and it exposes God to us. Right. And it can be fearful, but listen carefully. It's only fearful if we're going to him with our fig leaves on. Mm. But when we take the animal skin mm. that God designed for us, Christ, the sacrifice that forgave our sins, mm. that made us free from all our transgressions, <laughs> And a fellowship with him that's comfortable, more comfortable than our fig leaves. Mm. Wow. So we have to listen internally to his voice. It, and, I, and I know his voice can come out through other people or through right. circumstances as well. But we're listening internally. Uh, secondly, we need to watch our triggers, you know, because I tell you, we're going to get squeezed. <laughs> you know, and, and I hate the fact that Dorothy can make me mad sometimes. Nah. Yeah. <laughs> so don't do it again. Yeah. But the idea is, is that um, I have to see, and we, we, in the moment, we're not going to see this. No. But afterwards, we see, okay, Lord, she just did something, and it squeezed something out of me. And yeah. I, I love what Robert McGee says. It's like he asked an audience, he says, what comes out of a toothpaste tube when you squeeze it? And, and I love this analogy. <laughs> you know, I say it to people all the time. Yeah, toothpaste comes out of it. Why does toothpaste come out of a toothpaste tube when you squeeze it? Because that was in it. That's mm -hmm. what's in the tube. So when we're squeezed, what comes out of us? Right. What God wants to heal. So instead of pointing fingers at the other person or circumstance mm -hmm. that exposes our fig leaves, we go, Lord, what do you want to work on right. in me? So the triggers of life are things that happen that are undesirable, that expose something about that fig leaf, that shame, that guilt that we know we have. Right. 
you know? So we got to watch that. Don't automatically return to your coping mechanisms. We know that that is an automatic impulse. Right. And we have to learn to go inward and say, Lord, you are here, and I need to, to look at why. I feel what you know, I do. Joe, that takes work. Mm -hmm. A lot of people don't like that psychological mumbo jumbo. I got to ask myself, why are you feeling that way? Or, you know, why yeah. is that coming up? You know, but the idea is, is that, you know, in that process mm -hmm. with God, we're, we're healed. And then you have to, I, I talk to somebody. All right. Confide in someone. Let somebody know what's going on in your life so they can be a prayer partner with you. Find someone that you can trust, that you can be accountable to. And I have to say this, that you got to pursue wholeness. Yes. You got to want it. And, and, you know, that it's I hear a lot out there at this time, like, how can I find quiet time when I've got the kids with me all day? You know, and I'm like, Lord, show us. Just show me, Lord, yeah. what time during this day might I be able to take a few minutes just to be quiet with you? You got to pursue it. You got to want it. You got to go after it in order for it to happen. And that's a vulnerability. And it's being real with someone else and being real with yourself. And then lastly, it's a journaling. I, I journal and I was learned that very early on. And it's just a matter of writing out your thoughts and getting them out of your head. A lot of people say, well, I don't want to write down what I'm really thinking. Somebody's going to read that someday. Well, you know what? It's just being real before God in that respect. Find yeah. a good hiding place for that journal then if you need to. But just write it out because I find that when I start writing down all these thoughts and all these feelings and everything I'm having, I start off very negative. Then I end up just turning I can see in, as I'm writing the turn mm -hmm. as God starts to show me things and then I end up writing a prayer to God by the time I'm done and have some sort of scripture that he has shown me or I've looked up and been pursuing that. Mm -hmm. But just journal, write your thoughts down. Get the thoughts out of your head. Yeah, because what it does is it, it actually helps you to see patterns and what it is yeah. that you're doing. And, and, and that's the thing. It's like I, I, it's ugly what you write down. But it's already ugly inside. Right. <laughs> and according to Psalm 139, he perceives our thoughts from afar. So it's like he's right there. Yeah. And he just wants us to be more perfected in him. You know, as we close, I just want to let, let everybody know that one of, the, one of the stores that seems to always be open during this COVID-19 is Lowe's. <laughs> because what I hear is that people are on home improvement projects. It's one of the things that you know, is important. You know, it's like, we got time now. Let's go to Lowe's. Let's get our stuff. And so many people are doing that. Mm -hmm. But what we've been talking about here is slowing things down so God can work on us. Yeah. And it is, it, it's a great time to do that. And I know we're getting ready to transition to a, a plan, a phase plan That's to right. come we've back into Calvary. Mm -hmm. But even when we come back, God isn't done with us. He isn't done with us until we breathe our last. But in every day of our lives, we can rest assured that his love is so profound that he wants a connection with us. Right. And when Pastor Ryan talks about discipleship, we're talking about helping one another to gain that. Because not only are we pursuing our wholeness, but we are helping others to pursue their wholeness as well. We're working together as a church, discipling one another, and that is such an important thing. Folks, God wants us whole. It is an essential part of what we've been, what we're talking about here. And so we just want to close and invite you into the Lord's presence because it is powerful what he wants to do. And, and right now you might be having the yeah, but syndrome and you say, yeah, but that's not for me. That word is not for me. Or yeah, I, I struggle with that. I just don't know. I challenge you <laughs> to look inward, mm -hmm. to read the word, not from our perspective, our fleshly perspective, to see God, not from our fleshly perspective, but for the way he really is. And we're going to see him and we're going to see his love. And we're going to see him wooing us and calling out to us and exchanging those fig leaves with a relationship Amen. with him. Amen. Amen. Uh, after the sermon, uh, after we get done here, just a reminder here that, that you can go to after the sermon at calvarydover.org backslash grow. 
and I think I got that right. I'm not technologically savvy here. But after the sermon, you have some things that you can think about, uh, yeah, questions, questions to answer, uh, some guidance. You get a little bit of notes do about what Bible we've talked about to hear. Yes, mm -hmm. do some Bible study. So may God bless you through this week. It has been a joy and a privilege yeah. to stand by the one that you all want hugs from because I can do it. <laughs> That's so mean. <laughs> yes. I get my Dorothy hugs, right? All right. But folks, be patient. We'll be able to be together yeah, we'll here be together soon. soon. And uh, God is still in control yes. of everything. Let's pray. Let's pray. Lord, Jesus. we're thankful for this time here today. Thank we just you, are Lord. grateful, grateful, grateful. And maybe even inside of us, we don't know why. But we know, Lord, that we, on any shadow of a doubt, objectively, we have to understand and realize the pursuit of that you have for us, not because you have a target on our back, but because you love us and you want wholeness. And you want wholeness, not because you want us to just feel good. You have wholeness for us because you want relationship with us. You want to restore what was broken. Jesus. And so, Lord, each one of Jesus. us has been broken. Sorry, and will you want us, Lord, to just look at those fig leaves in life and be able to look at what it is you want to do. So we give you permission. And this is a dangerous prayer, but we give you permission to look inside of us, yes, to Lord. examine ourselves before the Lord, as the scripture says, search me, O God, and know my heart. Yes. There is so many ways that God wants to help us and make us whole. We give you all the glory and honor yes, for God. this word here today. Thank you for working on our hearts, yes, even when we don't like it. And we give you thanks in Jesus' holy name. Amen. 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 Have a great day, friends.